Good day and welcome to another edition of the Military and Foreign Affairs Network. I am your host, the Voice of Reason. Today's coverage of the ongoing civil war taking place uh, inside of the uh, former state of Ethiopia, uh, the fighting uh, continues. Uh, we have been saying that for, for many, many, many weeks now in terms of the intro, uh, as that is simply the truth. The fighting continues. We are seeing uh, continued operations uh, by the Tigrayan Defense Forces uh, deep inside of the Amhara region. Uh, as we as we look back and we look in terms of retrospect, uh, in terms of what the the battlefield looked like uh, six months ago, uh, when we were focused on uh, very large elements of the uh, Ethiopian and Amhara uh, militaries and the Eritrean militaries uh, occupying most of the Tigray region uh, with the exception of the mountainous uh, Tenbian region. Uh, since then, the status quo on the ground has changed dramatically. These forces uh, were evicted and uh, the uh, Tigrayan defense forces have launched a major invasion of the Amhara region seizing significant amounts of territory ranging from Sokota, Kobo, Weldia, Gashina, and other areas very close to uh, areas such as Dese and uh, further north uh, in the environments of uh, Debark, further south from uh, Adi Arke. But uh, as operations uh, sit right now uh, in terms of the, the tempo of operations. We are seeing uh, the, the fighting swing back and forth. Uh, areas are captured and then they're recaptured by one side or, or the other. Uh, we continue to see uh, operations ongoing very close to Dese. We continue to see the Tigrayan Defense Forces consolidating its positions. Uh, and again, um, I've discussed this before, we're seeing the consolidation of forces uh, that run from uh, south of Alamata, uh, consolidation of Kobo, areas east of Kobo, uh, running down the A2 highway uh, all the way to Weldia, uh, consolidation uh, in terms of setting up uh, defensive capabilities uh, for possible further offensive operations by the Amhara paramilitaries, by the remnants of the Ethiopian state, uh, again that blur between uh, what is Amhara, what is the Ethiopian federal government is, is changing. Uh, obviously, uh, the, uh, the, the consolidation continues south of Weldia, uh, just outside of Dese or north of Dese, and uh, very heavy fighting continues north of Dese, and in some cases all the way up towards uh, Mursa itself. Uh, which is south of uh, Weldia. Uh, the Tigrayan Defense Forces continue to push and consolidate its control uh, over areas uh, ranging from Gashina, east of Gashina, all the way to Weldia, and continue to, to push uh, in the environments of Falakit and Debre Zebit in terms of ongoing operations. So this this uh, this amount of territory, again, running from Alamata down to uh, uh, Wachale, Mursa area, and then further west, all the way out uh, towards uh, west of Gashina, uh, has been consolidated and, def and a defensive perimeter is being set up. Now, at the same time this is occurring, we're seeing a, another uh, interesting uh, tactic uh, start to develop uh, in terms of how the war is progressing. And what that tactic is, is we're not necessarily seeing a full-on conventional push in terms of the Tigrayan Defense Forces pushing its, uh, its, its front lines either further south or further west, or if we look uh, up north towards uh, Gondor and uh, the area of operations in this area, the continued uh, push south, we are seeing that, but what we are seeing is these deep penetration raids. We're seeing uh, units, infiltration units, uh, maneuvering its way further south into the Amhara region. And uh, what these forces are doing 
are starting to ambush and disrupt uh, the rear area operations of the uh, of the Amhara Regional Army and the Ethiopian Army as well. Uh, so again, what does that look like? Well, again, we continue to hear about these forces moving overland, possibly not following main uh, artery routes such as the A2 highway, uh, uh, B11 highway, B22 highway, uh, further into the Amhara region. What we're seeing are fairly significant units of the Tigrayan Defense Forces maneuvering over land and then uh, popping up to ambush and attack uh, Ethiopian state forces, Amhara uh, state forces, regional forces, uh, deep behind the lines uh, of what we would define as the current front line. So again, uh, we, we look at what is occurring near Dese and we define the area south of uh, Solula, uh, south of Haik, uh, just north of, of, of Dese as a somewhat of a defined front line. Well, the, uh, the, the Tigrayan Defense Forces are operating much deeper uh, than that. Again, they're, they're maneuvering south and west of Dese, south and east of uh, Kambolcha, and then conducting these operations against uh, points of uh, strategic interest uh, of the uh, Ethiopian slash Amharan regional state governments. Uh, we're also seeing this um, in, in, in both elements in terms of a normal conventional push west of Gashina along the B-22 highway, but we're also seeing continued infiltration uh, south and further west, south of Nefis Micha, around Agat, again, of these TDF units that are not utilizing main routes of advance, main roadways, but again, they are infiltrating. They are maneuvering uh, outside of the uh, normal front line uh, that, that has been uh, inherently set up through the course of the conflict. And uh, that is really causing uh, significant issues for uh, the Ethiopian state and the Ethiopian uh, and the uh, Amhara uh, militaries. And uh, we, uh, we also are seeing this in the West as well. Uh, in terms of operations north of uh, Gondor. Again, uh, you have the front line, the existing front line that exists uh, near Debark, but at the same time, and that front line tends to ebb and flow as we see the uh, TDF push south and then possibly is then uh, pushed back north by elements of the Amhara regional militias or the Ethiopian military. But at the same time, we continue to see these infiltration units of the, uh, the Tigrayan Defense Forces continue to operate um, really all over the Amhara region at this point, outside of the existing front lines. Uh, we're also seeing the, and I've talked about this in, in previous videos, the uh, really the massive buildup of military forces that continues really on both sides. Uh, we continue to see the Tigrayan Defense Forces continue to build its forces, continue to mobilize, continue to use existing infrastructure uh, inside of the Tigray region uh, to uh, uh, whether it is uh, creating uh, up armored uh, vehicles or uh, even the possible use of uh, small aircraft and further operations against uh, Amhara regional forces. And I had mentioned that in an uh, earlier uh, video uh, in terms of the possibility of starting to see some form of uh, limited uh, Tigrayan uh, aircraft capability. Uh, so what does that look like? Well, obviously the, uh, the Tigrayan defense forces control a variety of air bases located inside of the Tigray region. Now, do they control uh, aircraft in terms of uh, multi-role fighter jets? Do they control any, any forms of sukhoi's or MiGs or anything of, of, of the sort? No, they don't. But the possibility does exist that small aircraft could be used uh, for military use. And we've seen this in other conflict. Even a Cessna could be armed with bombs 
and a low-flying Cessna operating uh, very low to the ground, which cannot be seen on radar, can strike out at targets. Now, are these are these accurate strikes? No, of course not. But we we have seen this sort of activity before uh, in these sorts of conflicts. Uh, we we saw it uh, during the uh, Civil War in in Sri Lanka, where the uh, the uh, Tamil Tigers were able to convert small aircraft for use uh, in operations against the Sri Lankan government. And I would argue that uh, the uh, Tigrayan Defense Forces control much more of an industrial base uh, in terms of controlling key cities like Mekele and other areas that do have fairly large significant air bases that are still operational in terms of aircraft still landing and, and functioning. And uh, we could see some of these, uh, these air bases inside of the Tigray region possibly start to be used or other forward operating bases closer to the uh, Tigray Amharan border uh, for possible use against targets deep inside of uh, the Amhara region. So we have not seen it yet, but but again, uh, there is nothing stopping uh, the Tigrayan Defense Forces from utilizing small aircraft, from utilizing even drones. Uh, there is methods to purchase uh, drones and uh, have those drones be utilized in some sort of combat capacity. We've seen it in other conflicts, and uh, I would say that it is highly likely we could possibly see it in this conflict as well. But uh, that is what I was talking about in terms of uh, we, we could see, start to see some sort of air activity by the, uh, the Tigrayan Defense Forces uh, in terms of uh, creating some sort of capability from that method. And again, we've seen this in other areas of the world uh, prior and again, there's no reason why, uh, given the uh, the amount of territory, uh, which is basically the entire Tigray region that is under the control of the Tigrayan Defense Forces, that we could see uh, some of these uh, air bases start to be utilized. Uh, some of the assets that exist inside of the Tigray region uh, start to be repurposed for military operations. Completely likely, completely reasonable. And we could we could absolutely start to see that happen. And and again, not just aircraft, um, just as as we observed during the, for instance, the Syrian civil war, where uh, large trucks were converted into basically very uh, uh, very robust armored fighting vehicles with additional armor plate. Uh, I would anticipate uh, we we could possibly start to see that uh, inside of the Tigray region as well as this conflict continues. But uh, that is where operations stand as today. Uh, again, uh, be prepared for sudden uh, uh, momentum swings uh, in terms of what is going on on the ground. Remember uh, what occurred inside of the Tigray region, what things looked like uh, when the Tigray region was fully occupied. Uh, by the the state of Eritrea, by the uh, the Ethiopian military. Obviously, that's not the case anymore. Uh, the lines and strategic depth has been created, and uh, the TDF has moved further south, uh, fairly deep into the Amhara region. Uh, but again, as we see the the so-called rainy season end, as we see the continued buildup of forces, really on both sides, uh, we could see some some fairly uh, significant momentum swings as well. Uh, we do know that uh, operations on both sides are being planned and uh, from from the intel that uh, the uh, military and foreign affairs network has received, um, there could be some fairly significant operations uh, in the works uh, really on, on both sides of the equation. Uh, but again, uh, just a, a complete and utter mobilization towards uh, f to what can only be defined uh, as total war, uh, given the, the nature of the conflict, given some of the atrocities that have been uh, committed uh, uh, by especially 
uh, what occurred inside of the Tigray region. Uh, again, uh, the, the ability to negotiate, the ability to have discussions uh, has been greatly reduced. And uh, the situation looks to be resolved by the, by the military option. And uh, that continues. But we will again continue to keep our eye on the situation on the ground, continue to monitor the situation, especially uh, near Dese, especially the operations that continue west of Gashina as the TDF continue to push west, and then obviously operations that are continuing uh, north of Gondor and uh, south of uh, Debark and uh, Zarima areas as well. But again, as we receive more information, we will, we will absolutely report it. Uh, I wanted to touch on one other thing just real quick. The, uh, the prospect of sanctions the United States uh, the White House has announced the possibility that uh, further sanctions uh, will be coming down the pipe uh, in terms of targeting uh, all aspects uh, of those responsible for the conflict. Uh, and again, this is probably going to hurt the pocketbook of the regime uh, inside of Addis Ababa, but it's probably going to hurt the pocketbook of the regime in Eritrea. Uh, more so than uh, than uh, members of the uh, TPLF in the uh, Tigray region, uh, but uh, at the same time, um, these uh, these sanctions looks like they will be they will be occurring, and further sanctions will be occurring that will that will greatly uh, econ uh, impact uh, the economic situation inside of the uh, former state of uh, Ethiopia, and again. Uh, I say that, and in, in, uh, when you look at uh, the 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 territory, or what would be defined as the territory of Ethiopia, uh, again, if you're if you're living inside of Addis Ababa, uh, your experience of the conflict are much different than people say living in uh, Kobo, Weldia, uh, or areas uh, north of uh, Gondor. Completely different situation, and obviously. Uh, the the uh, the fighting that is occurring uh, inside of the Aromo region that is unabated and continues. Uh, the Aromo Liberation Army is very active uh, over much of Aromia, and uh, that contributes to the uh, the dissolving of Ethiopia as a functioning uh, state, and as it slowly migrates towards a failed state. Uh, in, in, in its aspect towards uh, many areas that are not under the control of the Ethiopian government, not under the control of uh, the Amharan regional government, and those two lines continue to blur into, in, in, in terms of who is really running the, the country. Uh, is it the Amhara region, or is it a federal government based in Addis Ababa? And I think those lines will continue to blur. Have a great day, everybody.